to entertain us at this point, praise and worship. Felix Sundukwe Wanile, please, are you ready? Please come forward to the stage for your own performance at this point. Thank you.
to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you. Please, you may resume your seats. Your Excellency, the Executive Governor of Fairpoint State, Apostle Engineer Dr. David Mwezomai, and your amiable Deputy, Barrister Dr. Eric Kelechi Kele Iwe, PhD. Let me defer to the Southeast Chairman Christian Association of Nigeria, Very Reverend Father Dr. Abraham Wale. At this point, I have the honor and privilege to invite to the podium the man the Lord has prepared this night to feed the good people of Ebony State with his word. He is a man born and brought up in Bronu State. He is a pathfinder in the vineyard of the Lord. I am talking about none other person that, than a child of God, per excellence, 
He is none other person than Prophet Dr. Isa El Boba, the Global President IBBM Initiative for Better and Brighter Nigeria. He is also the National Vice President Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria and the General Overseer Ebuba Ministries. Please, my dear brethren in the Lord, let's welcome this great man of God with a round of applause. Let everybody in this great square lift up your voice and give the Lord the loudest shout of hallelujah. Now we want to acknowledge the presence of the eternal rock of ages, the one that is the reason why we are here, and the one that is the sustainer of our lives, His Majesty and His Excellency, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Lords, the supreme authority, the mighty ruler, the one that is the secret behind what God has been doing with his servant in the land of Ebony State. Now I would like us, wherever you are, for one minute, take a bow before the King of Glory. Let's take a bow and worship him. Father, we bless your name. We honor you, King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. We thank you, Father, for the journey that you began about eight years ago. We thank you for the mercies. We thank you for the miracles. We thank you for the mountains that you have moved. And we thank you, Father God Almighty, for your sustenance. We bless your name that today we've come to open our mouth wide to celebrate you and to honor your name. And so, King of glory, we sanctify this arena by the blood of the Lamb. And we ask that you take preeminence and be exalted now and forevermore. In Jesus' name and the people say, Amen. amen. While you're still standing, we want to acknowledge and celebrate God's servant, the executive governor, for the amazing grace of God upon his life. For these past eight years, the Lord has shown his grace and his mercy. And for him to gather all of us here to honor God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, it means that he knows that life is not a destination. Life is a journey. And if it is not a destination where you come to a stop, but it is a continual journey, that you deserve to honor God. And he has honored God. Let's give the Lord the loudest celebration of God's mercy and grace upon his life. Apostle of God and the executive governor, we really honor you together with your uh, admirable, a wonderful deputy um, who made sure he was able to get me uh, through, in, you know, in a tight, tight schedule. And I want to honor the grace of God upon his life together with the speaker and all the members of the cabinet and all the leaders that are here. Let's give the Lord one more time the loudest clap offering. And I want to bless God for the senior pastors and the leaders that are here, the current chairman, not uh, Southwest, and all the church leaders that are present here. I want to honor God for this privilege given to me to be able to share with us and rejoice with us. Uh, today for the amazing, amazing power of God. Before you take your seat, there's something I want to share in a minute. When you were preparing for this um, planning, God spoke to me about two states. And then, because I had rounded up, I was going to round up all my schedule for the year, and this week was going to be my resting week, God spoke to me about Ebony. I said, no. Lord, I'm coming to Ebony next year, not this year. He said, no. You have an assignment, and you're coming. And so, a few hours later, I finished ministering at the Redeemed Christian Church of God Congress, an hour ministration, then I got the call. And I saw that call, and I said, Lord, what you told me, I'm seeing a missed call here. So the Lord said to me, I want to send you on an assignment. And I'm glad today to say that I'm here to fulfill the mandate of God, in the life of Ebony State and the people. Secondly, uh, when 
God's servant Apostle Omar, he was contesting and going to contest for the governorship of this state. There was a tussle, there was a contention. I came over to the land, flew into this state quietly with some church leaders, booked into a hotel, and I asked the church leaders, who do you people desire? There was a massive contention on his tickets, and then they told me who. I've never met him. So I prayed with them, and I said, Father, we demand a child of God to take over the seat and the affairs of a new state. So we decree and establish. And today I am glad that I'm coming back eight years later to celebrate God in the closing of your regime. Let's give the Lord a big hand of praise. That's God for you. God bless you. Be seated. The reason why we come to give thanks to God is because God is awesome. And God is the owner of our lives. And one thing that you find about great people, men and women, is that they know how to celebrate and appreciate people that have made impact in their lives. When you don't remember men and women that God have used in your life to help you through the journey of your life, it means that you're not going to sustain the future of your life. God is the source. God is the sustainer of our lives in this country. And that's why we see from the Bible reading, we see that all attribution and all thanksgiving is given to the Most High God, a heart of thankfulness. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, at 16 to verse 18, the Bible says, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances. In all situations that every child of God finds himself needs to give God praise. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That is the perfect will of God for everyone that is alive. The dead cannot praise God. It is only the living that can praise God. For everything that happens in the life of a child of God, the Bible says, For all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and to them that are called in accordance to his purpose. There is no tragedy in the life of a believer. Every child of God, when you're faced with the circumstances of a situation, is a moment for you to give thanks unto the King of glory. We give thanks to God for so many reasons. We give thanks to God for his mercy. For you to even remember something, you need to give thanks to the Almighty God. There are so many people that have lost their memory. For you to have a test and drink water or take a drink and you can feel the test, you need to give thanks to God because it is not by your mind. It's not by your power. For you to be able to move from point one to point two, you need to give thanks to the Almighty God. There are men and women that are billionaires in dollars that right now they are confined to a bed. They cannot move anywhere. They are under oxygen and their money couldn't save them. But God has been good to all of us here. Let's give God a loudest clap offering of praise. And so that's why the psalmist, the great man, man that ever lived, man that God so much loved, that he named his son after him, the man David. And I can see that you took the spirit of your mentor and your father. You named him in a college here, the David's institution, whether it's a university or a teaching hospital that I saw. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. That's the language of one of the most triumphant men that fought 68 battles of life. He has gone through betrayals and yet succeeded. He has gone through moments of assassination, yet he succeeded. He has gone through moments where he was hunted down and yet he overcame in the midst of it all. God picked him from the bottom of life and set him up in the midst of kings and princes. Why don't you give the king of glory the loudest clap of friend? Bless the Lord, oh my soul. 
our emotion, our feeling, our thinking, and everything that is inside of us. We need to bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Let my will bless the Lord. Let my emotion bless the Lord. Let my mind bless the Lord. Let my hands bless the Lord. Let my feet bless the Lord. Let my body dance and bless the Lord. That's why when I saw these women coming out to be dancing and stretching out, and somebody was trying to send them back, I said, you don't understand. The spirit of David is, is around here. The spirit of David is in the atmosphere. And when the spirit of David is in the atmosphere, women always roll out to celebrate the awesomeness of God. And anyone that knows that God has been good to you, only you should stand on your feet and shout hallelujah. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefit. It's always very easy with human beings to forget what God has done in their life. Many times you cry out to the Lord, it's just like a woman that is going into the child delivery or to the labor room. And she was said to God, Oh God, if you deliver me and I come out of this labor room with this baby, I will serve you all the days of my life. I will be number one in church. I will give you my time. I will give you my talent. I will give you my treasure. I will give you my love. And then a few months later she forgets of what God has shown to her. Many times it is very easy when we succeed in life and when we accomplish things in life to forget about the goodness and the mercy of the Almighty God in our lives. Just a few days ago, I was just walking around the camp, the prayer city, uh, the redeemed prayer city. I was just walking around giving praise and thanks to the Almighty God for being very gracious to me. And I remember that within the past few years, God blessed me as a preacher of the gospel with eight grandchildren within this shortest period. And I look at so many who could not survive. But I have the privilege of seeing my grandchildren. There are so many things to give thanks to the Lord. That I can have a cup of water to drink. It is a miracle. That I can have where I can lay my head. It is a miracle. That I can have the favor of friends. It is a miracle. That I can have the favor of fellowshipping with the brethren. It's a miracle. And anyone who believes that God has been good to you. Only you should shout the loudest hallelujah to the king of glory why we why we bless in the lord because he has forgiven us of all our iniquities several mistakes that we have made several things that has happened in our lives that will have disqualified us but god showed us mercy Somebody like me, I'm not qualified in any way. I've said it all, all over the world. I'm not qualified to talk about Jesus Christ because I stood against him, I fought against him, I destroyed anything that presented Christianity. But God showed me mercy. God forgave me my sins. And today I am a preacher of the gospel because of the mercy of the Lord. He forgave us all our iniquities. And he healed us from all our diseases. How many of us have gone through? If we talk with the, with the governor, he will tell you how many times he has gone through certain sicknesses in his life. That it is the mercy of God without the knowledge of anybody that pulled him out of that sickness. Do you know what you call common headache is not common? Just this afternoon, when I arrived, a medical doctor came to see me. And the medical doctor shared with me about a, a very vibrant doctor in the teaching hospital also. Very, very vibrant. He drove himself. And then he got to the hospital. But he didn't know that he was having such a high blood pressure. He didn't know. And then right there on his wheel, he slumped and died. Here in Abakalik. How many of us have gone through the valley of the shadow of death and God delivered us from the hands of the enemy? That's why we're giving thanks to the Lord. We're giving thanks to the Lord because he has healed us from all kinds of infirmity. Who redeemed thy life from destruction. Are you talking about people that set traps? That say that this government will never succeed? This government will never stand? This government will never accomplish its project? 
They dug several pit, but God, out of his mercy, was carrying this government from one level of glory to the other level of glory, to the other level of glory. He delivered us from destruction. Is it the attacks that came from outside that this land would have been scattered, would have been in war, but God took over? Can you give the King of Kings a loudest clap offering? Forget not his benefit who crowned thee with love and kindness and tender mercy. Whatever you are enjoying today, it's not because of your strength, it's not because of your mind, it's because of the mercies of the Lord. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord with my mouth. Will I make known <laughs> thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness with my mouth? Will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations? I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Forever I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. If I have one person that knows that God has been merciful to you. If God should have exposed your nakedness, you would have had nowhere to hide. But the mercy of the Lord clothed you. The mercy of the Lord covered you. I want you to rise on your feet and give this God amazing shout more than anybody standing next to you. Ah, if it is not the mercy of God, if it is not the mercy of God, we won't be talking about this country here. It is the mercy of God. So we're going to do something before you take your seat. And all of you that are watching, by television, I want you to know that the greatest thing you can do in your life is to have the heart of gratitude, the heart of thanksgiving. Give it thanks to God for God showing you mercy. And so we're going to give the Lord a shout of hallelujah three times for showing us mercy in Ebony, showing mercy to the governor and his entire cabinet for this seven years plus to the eight year. Let's give the Lord the loudest shout of hallelujah three times. Give the Lord a big clap offering and be seated. Who satisfied my mouth with good things. God has been good to us. There is none of us that is sitting down here for the past seven days. You haven't had something to eat. God has satisfied your mouth with good things. In the midst of the economic, the harsh economy in the nation. God has sustained you. God has worked over you and your family so that your youth is renewed like the eagle. If you look at the governor, you look at the team, God has renewed every one of us. We are getting older, but we are looking younger and we are looking stronger. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, God has been the secret of your strength. I am grateful to God on your behalf. I celebrate God for his goodness. That's why we're here. We're telling God, Father, we have forgotten. We have not forgotten the wonderful thing that you have done. And that's why the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 12 and verse 4 to 5. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 4 to 5. And in that day shall you say, on that day shall you say, praise the Lord. Call upon his name. Declare his doing among the people. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing unto the Lord, for he has done excellent things that is known in all the earth. I mean, even a blind man knows that God has done something incredible in a bony state. Several years ago, when I came here, those developments, I've not seen them. But I've seen a transformation, much more than you can ever imagine anywhere else. Ebony stands out in terms of development. You see the amazing road, the amazing network, the amazing flyovers. 
when I was coming a few years ago, driving from Enugu, you realize coming into a point, you see some of the villages. But right now, villages have been transformed to cities. You can see three-story, five-story building rising up. Why? Because God has been good to the land. That's why we're giving thanks to God. We are here to speak about the goodness of God. We're here to speak about the mercies of God. What God has done. And that's why Psalm 118 and verse 24. The psalmist says, this is the day which the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and we will be glad in it. This is a day of celebration. This is a day that we need to give thanks to the Almighty God. I close with these scriptures in Chronicles, 1 Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 13 to 16. 1 Chronicles 29 verse 13 to 16. Now therefore, our God, I would like everybody to shout it and say, our God is a good God. Our God is a wonderful God. Look at what he said. Uh, and now therefore, our God, we give thanks to you and praise your glorious name who am i that's the language of david the language of brokenness and humility who am i what is my people where was i a few years ago who knew me anywhere but mercy found me mercy picked me up mercy raised me up mercy announced me Mercy gave me the wisdom. Mercy empowered me. Who am I? And what is my people? That we should be able to offer so willingly after this sort. For all things come of thee. And of thine own have we given thee. For we are strangers before thee and sojourners. As we are all our fathers. Our days on the earth are as a shadow. And there is none abiding. Our Lord, our God, of this thought that we have prepared to build thee a house for thy holy name, cometh of thy hand, and is all thy own. Everything we talk about, power came from God. Prosperity came from God. Preservation came from God. Provision came from God. God's divine power for acceleration came from God. Unusual favor upon this government came from God. God has favored you in the eyes of your enemy and he has made your enemies be at peace with you because mercy is on your side. And all of this thing came from God. None of us have the power to boast. And that's why I'm glad when the governor came here, he told everybody here, don't implicate me don't allow god to be angry with me because he said david david understand that you can never share the glory you can never share the glory with the one that is the source of your strength the one that is the source of your sustenance the one that is the source of your success god our god is the great amazing god now i want to say this when you are giving thanks to god you give thanks to god from the depths of your heart that God has shown you mercy. You're giving thanks to the Almighty God because you need God to do more for you. The remaining months in this government will be greater than all the past seven years put together. It's going to be greater. It's going to be awesome. But you see, to everyone that is listening to me, God shows us mercy so that we can rededicate our lives. So that we can reconnect ourselves to our maker. God is the beginning of our lives. And God is the end of our lives. No matter what you accomplish in this world. There is nothing you accomplish in this world that ever makes God great or less. God is God. God blesses you to make you but you cannot make God. You need God in your life. You need God to succeed in your life. Don't look at the mansions you have and the billions you have and connection with presidents of the world. All of these that you see, they are nothing in the eyes of God. The greatest of all is your connection with God directly. And that means that David understood this and this is what he said. Blessed are the undefiled 
in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimony. Blessed are they that seek him with the whole of their heart. Tonight, I'm going to give somebody here one of the greatest privilege you can ever have. And that is the privilege of reconciling your walk with God. Your way with God. Your relationship with God. When you have God, you have gotten everything. When you have God on your side, you got everything in your life. You're safe. And tonight, I want to pray with you that you also will have a relationship with God where God will accept your sacrifice and accept your offerings of thanksgiving. So at this moment, I would like everybody to rise on your feet as we pray. And I want to lead you, anyone that is in this place that is saying to me, Preacher, I want to establish my relationship with God. I want to repent of my sins. Only you should raise your right hand and I'm going to pray with you. God bless all of these hands that are rising and raising up being raised. So many hands. Now I want you to do something. I know that we are in a live broadcast here, but I need you to do something because this is the greatest. The greatest in heaven when you get a car, heaven doesn't dance. When you, buy, when you buy a house, heaven doesn't dance. But when your soul is restored, there is massive celebration. So all of you that raise your hand, I'm going to give you just one minute. Come out here close to me. I'm going to pray with you right now. Just come. All of you that want me to pray for the salvation of your soul, come out here. Stand with me here quickly. I'm going to pray with you. Quickly, quickly. Quick, quick, run, run quick. Because this is the greatest you can experience. I have seen governors, presidents of nations that have invited me running to surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. I've seen the most powerful people on earth. The greatest experience you can have is your relationship with Jesus Christ. Come. This is the greatest. Come. Come. Come, 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 come. For this purpose, God sent me. For this reason, this meeting was organized. Come. There is room at the cross for you. There is room at the cross for you. A million others may come to the cross. There is room at the cross for you. The disciples of Jesus came to him and said, Master, we went out on an errand that you sent us. Demons were being checked out. People were being healed. Jesus said, wait a minute, don't rejoice because of these things you see. Rejoice because your name is written in the book of life. This is the greatest. I am waiting for one person quickly. You are the one in one minute. Come here before I pray. Jesus wants to enlist you before the year closes. That's why this is the day that the Lord has made. And we will rejoice and be glad in it. Raise your hands now, all of you. Say with me, precious Jesus, I raise my hands to you. I acknowledge my sins. I acknowledge my transgressions. I ask you, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. I want you to be in my life. I don't want to face life by myself. I want to face life with you on my side. I am sorry for all my transgressions. And I ask you now, please forgive me. I surrender my life, my heart, my soul, my spirit to you tonight. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me my transgression. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe 
you died for me. I believe you were raised from the dead. And I believe you are the son of God. I believe and I receive you in Jesus name. Now Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the life of your children. Thank you because you sent me to declare your word to them. And to as many as believe you and they call upon your name, they shall be saved. And I thank you tonight, Father, because salvation has come to every one of them here. Salvation has come to their family. Salvation has come to their lives. Salvation has come to their destiny. And therefore, Lord, I pray your blessing upon their life. That from now, the mercy of the Lord will speak over you. The mercy of the Lord will work a miracle in your life. Amen. Whatever men have said is impossible, the Almighty God is going to make it possible. Amen. I decree and declare over your life that every curse placed on your life, that curse is reversed today in the name of Jesus. You are blessed to excel. You are blessed to succeed. I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And everybody in this place shout the loudest, Amen. God bless you. Um, I, I, after the service, after the whole concert, I would like you to wait behind. I would want to have all your details because I'm going to be praying for you. Personally, I'm going to be praying for you. Is that right? God bless you. You can go back to your seat, but after the meeting, just come here. Let's all rise and give the Lord a clap offering from this great, great, great miracle that has happened in this great place. Now, before I take my seat, I'm going to pray for you, Your Excellency. I'm going to pray for the land in a minute. But I want to say this to you, which I'm going to talk with you privately. But in this last phase of your life, God is going to use you to raise more men. God is going to use it to reconcile the children of a boy state. Amen. God is going to use you to bring about a revival in the next phase. And so I'm going to pray with you, sir, together with the members of your cabinet. And everybody, can you stretch your hand towards the executive governor, together with the speaker, the deputy governor. Heavenly Father, I thank you because of your calling. And the calling of the Lord is without repentance. I lift up your servant. He's bowing down before you. And I commit him to your hands. That blessed Lamb of God, he is the son of David. He has the spirit of David in him. And Lord, I commend him together with his deputy, the speaker, and the entire members of the cabinet. I pray for three blessings upon their lives. The Lord, let your glory cover them. The Lord, I pray that your greatness will be more pronounced upon their lives. And gracious Lamb of God, everywhere they need your healing touch, heal those aspects in the name of Jesus. And I declare your favor to go with them at the finishing of this project. I bless you and ask the Lord to secure you and your entire cabinet in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and let the people of Eboye shout the loudest, Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. If you are touched by this wonderful word of God from a dogged preacher of the gospel, make a joyful noise to the Lord wherever you are. Thank you very much. At this point, Your Excellency, very distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we'll be inviting revelation, miracle and revelation to please come to the stage for their own performance.
Can anybody challenge your God? 
Thank you. Your Excellency, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I would like to call, invite to the stage Apple C and his team. Apple C. Apple C, please. Thank you very much. Night of praise in the Bonnie State of Nigeria. Thank you very much. Everybody make some noise for Jesus. Everybody stay to make some noise for Jesus. Woo! Permit me to say this before I continue to sing. My boys are getting ready. His Excellency, I want to really appreciate what God is doing with you in the Boeing State. Thank you for being a blessing to us. God has used you to transform a born state, and a born state is more than London today. If what I'm saying is making sense, can you put your hands together for Jesus? And I'm also glad that I'm a, I'm a son of the soil. I'm coming all the way from a born state. This is my place. I'm happy to be home. So I want to say, I am delighted, and we are delighted to be here tonight. To join in thanking God for what God is doing in a boy state. Our prayer is that the next person that will come will do more than in the name of Jesus. Can you lift up your hands and wave it to Jesus, everybody? All we came tonight is to worship and give God praise. If God is good to you, lift up your hands and wave it to Him. You are not waving to a man that is your mate. You are waving to a man that owns everything you are looking for. Can you stand on your feet and begin to wave your hands to the mighty God? And one of them will not turn to Jehovah El Shaddai. But what can the room Bahamara Maros or Jehovah Ebu Bedike? When you are not a canal, Abakura Zurika, what not one year? Or what I get to walk to Nonia? And I will have a mamma Siamasi, a mamma Siamasi. Who put it on your son? Somebody begin to raise your voice to him. Thank you, Jesus. Ile me uso, e buso na digi, odi do ye di adi. Ile me uso, e bo chi chi ri ba chi uso, odi do ye di adi. So ile me uso. Ibuwa lumega, 
Oh, my God. 
Boy State. Jehovah God goes to give Bali. Let us do this. Oh, let us do this. Jehovah God goes to give Bali. Let us do this. Oh, let us do this. Jehovah God. Oh, let us do this. Oh, let us do this. Jehovah God. Let me drop my song and leave you. A Boy State. What is mega? What is mega? What is mega? in the Lord. In the book of Psalm 79 chapter 13, the Bible tells us to praise God by passing from generation to generation the knowledge of his goodness, grace and mercy. And that's exactly what His Excellency our Governor has been doing tonight. Can you give him a resounding applause? It is on that note that I have done and privilege to very humbly invite an apostle of God. A man who has given a facelift to a police state of Nigeria. A governor with a difference. His Excellency, Engineer Dr. David Mweze Omai, C-O-N. Your Excellency, sir.
tonight, but I will rather use the minutes allocated to me to praise God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We are grateful, oh Lord. We are grateful, oh Lord. Sing it. We Let me apologize for the absence of the beautiful mother of the state, my dear wife. She made all the efforts to be here, but only came into the country this morning. And that's why she's not here, but she's watching us. And we are seeing her beautiful face in the spirit. A dear prophet, Esa, it was Job that said to God, I've heard you by the hearing of the ears, but today my eyes have seen God. You're a great man of God. You're a great man of God. Can we put our hands together to our great prophets tonight? Thank you very, very much. Thank you for, I will tell you two things you said tonight, that God has used you to amend. I will let you know. And I can tell you now. I was saying to myself that one of the things I will be regretting while in office is the people that could not see the message of God upon the state. It's the people that are playing politics with the miracles of God in the state. And when they talk, why I don't reply them? is that what has happened in Ebony State is beyond me and beyond the comprehension of anyone. You have to be in the spirit. What is happening there? Can you please give us audience? You have to have a good heart to know what has happened in Ebony State. But the prophet said something. He said you are going to be uniting your brothers and sisters of Ebony State before you leave. That is prophecy. If you believe, say hallelujah. hallelujah. 
it's been my intention, I have always said that my greatest legacies will be those that I remove from the political class to the business class. And you've given a word of prophecy that you are going to be raising more leaders in this state. Can we shout hallelujah to God? Hallelujah. <coughs> we are very grateful to you. Thank you for coming. If I were to make a decree, I would have decreed that our chaplain, who is in charge of our Thanksgiving service, we seize all the guest performers tonight for our Sunday service. If we were to be a decree, but Hag, don't I have an executive order? So it's here by past. Adeka Chema Southeast, thank you very, very much. We call you the conscience of ESCO. We thank you. We will have opportunity to say all that you have done for us, you, the bishops, the Khan, the ministers of God in Ebony State. You know, the job is very easy where you are not the one doing it. But the men and women of God understand the miracle that took place in the point State. It's not ordinary. It's not. And I want to also thank my very dear pastor. Each time I'm troubled, I will tell you, look, I don't pity you. It is your job to pray for me. Why it is my job to make mistakes and to make trouble. Our dear Pastor Eunice, thank you very much. Thank you very much. I we have time within our celebration week to thank my deputy and the wife, the speaker, the deputy speaker, my brother MVC, the chief judge and the wife, all the ESCO members, the judges of a boy state, President Customary Court of Appeal, all the House of Assembly members, National Assembly members, our dear leaders, the women, different uh, uh, partners of mine, I want to thank you very, very highly for coming out to express your gratitude to God. You know, somebody said that when you are thankful to God, that your tank will be full. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Are you hearing me very well? I'm not sure you're hearing me very well. You're hearing me very well. Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? Who can battle with the Lord? I do not know. David. My wife used to tell me, of truth, you are David. And he said that David fought 68 wars. I asked my deputy whether my has reached 68. He said it's almost getting more. <laughs> but in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that has called us. And tonight, it is my pleasure to again and again announce my successor in the person of the Speaker by State House of Assembly. And if I be a man of God and do not serve any other God, this pronouncement will come to pass in Jesus' name. And the anointing of God that came upon me, greater anointing shall be upon you. And when the anointing comes, you will dance the dance of David. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world.
It's not by my It's not by my It's not by my He's not my God. He's not my God. He's not my God. Say to David, remember I took you from following sheep. You must all the time remember it's not by power nor by might. That the same God we have sought in a boy state this number of years, you will continue to serve the same God and your ways will be prosperous. It doesn't matter the battles that are set ahead of us. You are my son and greater will be my son than the father. And I'll be by the side, even when you mount the throne, I will fight alongside with you, because you will perform greater than me, if you hold our Lord Jesus Christ. There is no battle that can overcome us. All oh, that that sin is so that the testimony of God will be very thick. He did it before, he will do it again. Praise the Lord. If you believe, say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you believe, say hallelujah. hallelujah. We are great. Oh, oh, Lord. We are great. told me that the remaining five months of administration, every month midweek, we shall mount the saddle like this to praise God. Can you put your hands together for our God? Hallelujah. There is none of our project that will not be completed. By the month of January, we shall be landing at our airport. It shall come to pass. It shall come to pass. Madoni ne na se ebu be ebu be ebu be di no ba. And so, we have our Sunday Thanksgiving service. And I will be pleading with our pastor that we don't do it in our chapel in a very beautiful place, but we do it in a communical center here because it must be packed out. And that day we will dance. It will be very unusual. We will dance and dance and dance. And then we will see the glory of the Lord. It must come down upon us. Praise the Lord. Aka kaya, aka chiyo vane mema, ole bube, kene ruari debe, isi kendo, isi kendo, kena diria tanda, aka. Ibu 
minutes of our praise night and people feel like dancing allow them to come and dance just be careful of our cable so that we don't go off air <laughs> praise the lord praise the lord Ooh. blessed be the name of our lord, of the lord. To be to be Excellencies, we want to bring in at this point a Ma Onyx to please come forward for his own performance. Onyx, please. If on your step, come on, give it up to Jesus. Come on up. Jesus has carried. Let me hear you raise your voice. If when you stand, come on.
television event.